I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will learn significance of second derivative in calculating point of inflection and then sketching accurate graph. Let's take the example to sketch the graph of function f of x equals to 1 over x square plus 3. Now we have already done this one in rational functions. Let me do it the way we used to do it. 1 over x square plus 3, it means a reciprocal function, right? x square plus 3 is a parabola, which you could do kind of like this. So that becomes a parabola, x square plus 3, where the y-intercept is, is 3. So it's basically x square translated 3 units up. Now if I have to sketch the reciprocal of this, then what do I do? I take reciprocal of 3, let us say, which is 1 third. So let me increase the scale, okay, <clears throat> and assume this is 1 third, okay, because I don't want to make it so close here. And as the graph moves towards infinity, its the reciprocal will move towards 0. So what we get here is kind of a function which is like this. So that becomes the graph of our function f of x, correct, where this point here is 1 over 3, the maximum. This is good enough. But critical part of this graph is the point of inflection. You will notice that on this side, the graph is concave up and thereafter it changes its concavity. Now we want to know exactly what is this point where the concavity changes from the symmetry I could say this. Where is this point where the concavity changes? The answer to this lies in second derivative. right? This is the point where the second derivative is 0 and its value before this point is positive and after this negative. Right, so we'll see this in this particular video. So we have f of x equals to 1 over x squared plus 3. What is the derivative of this function? Derivative will be, you could use product rule or quotient rule. You may write this as uh, x squared plus 3 to the power of minus 1 if you want to use the power rule. Anyway, uh, let's use any rule, but the result will be x squared plus 3 whole square and derivative of 2x with a negative sign minus 2x. So that becomes the first derivative. The second derivative will be, let's use the quotient rule, denominator square x square plus 3 whole square, derivative of the numerator which is minus 2 times x square plus 3 whole square minus the first function which is minus 2x times derivative of this which is 2 times x square plus 3 times 2x. Now from here we can take uh, minus 2 x square plus 3 common. We left with x square plus 3 from the first term and here we have taken minus common. So we are left with minus, we've already taken one of the twos common. <clears throat> so, so we're left with, so if I take one of the twos common, let's say this one, I'm left with 4x square, correct? I'm left with minus 4x square. We've already taken x square plus 3 common. And the denominator will be x square plus 3 whole square. This can be simplified, so we get minus 2 x square plus 3 and here we get 3 minus 3x square divided by x square plus 3 whole square. You could take minus 3 common, so that makes this one plus. So if I take minus 3 common, I get 6 here, x square plus 3, and I can write this as x square minus 1 divided by, 
we could cancel one of these x square plus threes, right? So I'm just okay. Now let's write on the final expression. Uh, Cancelling one of these, I could have done it earlier also. Okay. So let me write down the final second derivative. This is the second derivative which we are calculating. So the second derivative for us is six times x square minus one divided by x square plus three. Now what are the critical points when the second derivative is zero? f dash x equals to zero at x equals to plus minus one, correct? So we can analyze these two points. So there could be a point of inflection at these two points, correct? So let's analyze this. So on the number line, let these two points be at these positions, minus one and plus one. We are trying to analyze the second derivative. That is the expression for second derivative. If I take a value which is on this side, it could be minus two, somewhere here could be one, zero, and two on the other side. If I substitute minus two here, then we'll find that the second derivative is positive, right? Four minus one is positive, so it's positive. If I substitute zero here, it will be negative, negative one, right? Zero minus, and for two, it is again positive. So the concavity of the graph will be concave up in the interval on the left side of minus one, concave down in between minus one and one, and concave up thereafter. Since the concavity changes, you can see here, since the concavity changes, at both these points, we have point of inflection. So this is that point when x value is minus one, correct? Now you can always find the value of the function at minus one. So what is f of minus one? If I substitute minus 1 here, I get 1 over or plus minus 1 because of the symmetry, right? This is also an even function. I get uh, 1 over 4. Uh, let me write down this as, okay, let's write plus minus 1 whole square plus 3, which is equal to 1 over 4. So this value will be 1 over 4. So the point of inflection, as you've seen here, will be at plus minus 1 and the y value will be 1 over 4. Now that defines the curve very well. Do you see that? So that's the beauty of second derivative. It gives you concavity of the curve, change of concavity and thereby point of inflection. And in many examples, it could be very critical to sketch accurate graphs. So I hope with this example, you understand the significance of second derivative and its role in sketching curves. If you like it, that'd be great. Feel free to share comments and my videos. Thanks for watching.